What's up, everybody, and welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about these studies that the scientific community states every time they want to talk about metabolism and meal timing. Over and over again, I'm hearing, well, meal timing doesn't matter, and six meals a day doesn't matter, and you can eat it in one meal, you can eat it in this, and they cite, well, you know, scientific studies have proven. So I'm like, you know what, I'm tired of this shit. Let's see what scientific studies have proven. So what I did was go online and Google the shit out of it and find the studies that everybody is quoting, okay? And there's not a whole lot of them. There's a few that they keep quoting over and over again. And those are the ones that we're going to take a look at, okay? Now, before we get into that, what I want to talk about for a second is those finer details again that we've talked about in the past where the, the things that are not overlooked but the things that necessarily people don't deem necessary or deem important can usually be the things that come back and bite you in the ass and make you not get results. For instance, there was a, <laughs> an instance in uh, 2012, I was at a show, and there was a guy in my class, and this guy was talking about how cardio is not necessary. Now, we've all heard the new cardio kick, and there is a, you know, a, a percentage of people that don't need to do cardio and get shredded, okay? But that's not everybody with a blanket statement like this guy was saying. He was, nobody needs to do cardio, I don't do cardio. And he's got like a big baggy sweatshirt on, and I'm looking at his face, and his face looks kind of lean, and I'm like, shit, and he looks kind of thick in the sweatshirt, and I'm like, Fuck, this dude's in my class. He's not doing cardio. He probably he has a shit down pat, man. I mean, he knows what he's doing. And this is 2012. So it's like even nowadays, when I hear these people shoot their mouths off, I still take into consideration, wow, this could be true. I'm not necessarily bro. I'm not necessarily not open to new things. Of course I'm going to listen to new things. I mean, I don't want to do cardio. So if this guy was right, let's see what kind of physique he produced. So he goes on to say that, you know, he's like, I just restrict my calories and I do calorie restriction and I get in the shape and that's all you really need, man. You know, that's all. And he starts talking all this shit. And I'm like, damn. All right, so we're backstage getting ready to go on stage and he strips down. And from the neck down, he looked like he was about 10 weeks out. He had cellulite on his ass. And I'm sitting there going, I can't believe I fucking even thought about listening to what this guy was saying because it's bullshit. Yes, of course he didn't do any cardio. He looks like shit. I beat him by like 15 placings in the friggin' in the class. So it's like, you know, he was going based on, you know, calorie restriction drops fat and scientific studies say this. And I'm just like, fuck, you know, more of these like scientific studies. One guy, I remember, you know, he was carving up on Fruit Loops at the, the show. And I'm watching him eat these Fruit Loops out of the box. And I'm sitting there going, and of course, covered up, baggy sweatshirt and stuff. And I'm sitting there going, fuck, I want to eat Fruit Loops. What the fuck? Well, when he stripped down, obviously he looked like shit. So the Fruit Loops didn't work for him. But his idea was a carb was a carb. And that's how he dieted, not going the, you know, well, the complex carbohydrates are good, fiber carb. He was just like, I eat fucking Fruit Loops all the time. And he looked like he ate Fruit Loops all the time. The bottom line is a lot of these people who are making these claims of, well, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter, they're not producing the best results and they're not producing great physiques. And it's a matter of fact that nowadays the ranks of these physique competitions are watered down. The competitions are not what they were 10 years ago. And just about everybody and their brother wants to get on stage. So, of course, they're doing decent because they're competing against competitors that really shouldn't be on stage to begin with, okay? Now let's get into these, these scientific studies. And again, this is not open to debate. I'm not debating these. I'm going to read word for word what these studies say. Now, take this literal because this is what the scientists want. They want you to, they don't want interpretation. If they say this is blue, they don't want you to interpret it as like it could be blue, it could be red, it could be green. They're like, this is blue. It's fucking blue. My shirt is blue. Blue, okay? So the first one was the two meals versus six meals per day, okay? Now they had, um, it was intervals of two to where they had two days, they did uh, two meals, two days, they did six meals, okay? The conclusions were, this was the conclusion, in the short term, short term, meal frequency and period of fasting have no major impact on energy intake or expenditure, but... Energy expenditure is delayed with a lower meal frequency compared to higher meal frequency. Okay, let's break that down. And if you're going to read it exact, first of all, the two and two, anybody who knows anything about dieting knows, even if it's, if it's going into a keto diet, it takes you longer than two days to go into ketosis. It takes you longer than two days to see the scale drop. So if you're changing things every two days, there's a good possibility you're not going to get any results based on those two-day intervals. It takes longer than that for your body to adapt. Now, if they said they did this for two weeks straight of just two meals a day or two weeks straight of six meals a day, and then they posted, I guarantee you the data would be different. Now, if you did it for 16 weeks, which is it says straight here, in the short term, bodybuilding diets are not short term. 16 to 20 weeks, it's like half a year. Okay, that's not short term. 
but they did find a difference in any exp energy expenditure that was delayed with the lower meal frequency. Okay, so there was a change in metabolism when the meals were changed from two to six. There was something that happened even in the short term. So they're saying like it had no major impact on energy intake or expenditure, but energy expenditure is delayed. So something does happen. Just to say that to say that meal frequency doesn't do anything is just a flat out lie. And if you want to interpret it that way, that's your business. But the bottom line is the black and white in this statement is something does happen when you change meal frequency. Okay? And it's only two days at a time. The other study that's always quoted that we keep getting is a study was conducted to investigate whether there is a pattern of nutrient utilization in man and how this is affected by meal frequency to explain possible consequences of meal frequency for body weight regulation. Okay? Let me shut this off. Okay. It says, when the daily energy intake is consumed in small number of large meals, so it's three meals of, you know, bigger meals, there is an increased chance to become overweight, possibly an elevated lipogenesis, fat synthesis, and accumulation. So now this study is actually telling you, okay, that by smaller meals, there is a possibility, okay, they're not saying definitely, but they're saying it's a possibility, but they're not saying it doesn't happen. You accumulate fat if you eat smaller meals, hence a lower metabolism rate, okay? Um, 13 subjects, two males and 11 females were fed energy balance in two week, in two meals per day, gorging pattern and seven meals per day, nibbling pattern over two day intervals. Okay. Two day intervals again. So every two days they're switching it. The gorging pattern, carbohydrate oxidization was significantly elevated during the interval following the first meal. In the second meal, the decreased rate of carbohydrate oxygen observed during the fasting period from rising in the morning to the first meal, was compensated by an increase in fat oxidization to over, excuse me, to cover energy needs. The nibbling pattern, carbohydrate, and fat oxidization remained relatively constant during the active hours of the day. Now, that says the nibbling pattern. So that would be multiple meals throughout the day. Remain consistent. That means it didn't slow up, it didn't speed down, it remained consistent. Now, the other one, which was the, the large feeding pattern, slowed down and sped up. So there was some consistency in the fact that depending on how many meals you had and spaced them out, there was a change. Okay, again, these studies are not long-term, they're short-term, and they are seeing differences in the meal frequency as far as how carbohydrates are used, how fats are used. So how you can interpret this, and these are the main studies that everybody's citing. These are the ones that everybody goes, oh, it doesn't matter, meal frequency doesn't matter. So what I'm trying to understand is, and what boggles my mind is, if it's black and white and tells you flat out there's a change in metabolism due to these, whether it's speed up or slow down, meal frequency and meal timing matter. So I'll leave you with that to ponder, and you guys can argue because I'm going to get a bunch of science geeks in here complaining that I'm interpreting it wrong when I'm saying the exact literal words. There's no interpretation. Oxidization changed whether you had two to six meals, period. How do you interpret that? Did it not change? How do you... It's blue. BioSureTraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. You know what? Fight. Go for it. Argue. www.biosurtraining.com is a blog and where the meal frequency makes a difference bicep and we're out.